Good morning, good morning. Thank you so much once again. I can't thank you enough for giving me yet another day to come and talk to you. Remember, this is your show. I only facilitate. It has been a blessing every Tuesday to have a guest and talk with us on this show that we call Morning Digest and we talk on matters leadership. I've always seen that leadership is not something you can handle today, tomorrow, and you are done. It is a lifetime thing. Leadership is needed. It's, I mean, you cannot talk about it enough. I remember last time we were talking about leadership transitions, leadership and honor. And before then, I remember you will be, you know, you agree with me that there's a time I had a guest here who came and man, he brought the house down. You know why? Because he had so much to share with us. And of course, after that, people kept on saying, that man did not finish all what he had to say. And I can tell you, even if he came 20, 30 times, he cannot finish because he is loaded. This man, I've known him for a long time. I can tell you, I've known him for more than 40 years, and I have seen his consistency in whatever he does. This man is not just here to talk about leadership. He is also going to talk about other dimension. This man has taught and has been a teacher, you know, a teacher, he has been a preacher, he has been in leadership circles, and today I asked him to come and talk about something that he has known about. Many years ago, this man used to write articles that would go all over the world on area of family. And remember, if we are talking about fam uh, leadership, you cannot ignore the place of the family. Today we are saying things are going wrong and the government and the higher circles because they went wrong in the family circles. And so I thought, why don't we go back to the kitchen of where these things are cooked and get to know the recipe, whether we are getting it right or not getting it right. Remember today, uh, I am going to talk, we are going to talk about family. But before we get to it, I want to, you, to ask you to do us a favor. We are in the Facebook account and also in the YouTube account. Before we go very far, just take your phone and guess what? Go to the Elevate TV and then you are going to get our account there. Click share, welcome someone and tell someone they are back again. Tuesday morning is time to watch and listen to what is happening at the Elevate TV. My guest today is Dr. Sami Gitari. Dr. Sami Gitari is the bishop of, uh, presiding bishop of Gospel Celebration Churches. Dr. Sami Gitari is an author. Dr. Sami Gitari has been a teacher for many years, and I, I can't tell you everything about this man, but one thing Dr. Gitari is known for is this passion for family. And I said, before we go very far with matters leadership, let us get it also from the family perspective. And so I want to welcome you, Dr. Sami Gitali. Please greet us and tell us something before we start. Well, good morning and praise the Lord. It's true, I am very passionate about family. I, I think that uh, it begins with the vision I got in 1989 about family. That says if you build strong families, you build strong churches, and you build a strong nation. And I discovered everything begins from family. Even God began create, I mean, building the whole world from building a family. He gave the first mandate not to everybody, but to a family. And when things are right with the family, things are right with the nation. Wow, thank you so much. What a, what a beginning. <laughs> you know, Dr. Gitali, you used to write in a magazine many years ago. Revival Spring. Revival Spring. And uh, every time, many places I've been, I talk to people and say, yes, I know that man. He used to write about family. And uh, the, many people know you because of writing. And others know because I used to have a radio program called and Family radio, Talk. The Family Talk. Yeah. Now, um, this show, you know, you have come here. We the last time we were talking about, fam, I mean, uh, um, leadership secrets. Yeah, and you did a very good job. I must say that was fantastic. Wow, thank um, you. I must also say that uh, that is one of the shows I received a lot of calls and the people wrote back. And even after the show, they kept on asking, "Can we have that man come back again?" Wow. And um, then you know, as we were talking with someone, says, "Why don't you ask him to come and talk?" family. I said, you know what? We are talking about leadership. But I said, you know, you cannot talk about leadership without talking about family. Every, well, leader, can, every leader comes from a family. Every leader comes from a family. And he goes home to a family. <laughs> oh, 
Man, so tell us, what do you think about the connection between leadership and the family? I think the connection is very, very, very big. Number one, because everyone minus none is a product of a family. Everyone minus one. We a product minus one. none. Mm -hmm. We come from a family, whether it is functional or dysfunctional. Mm -hmm. And this functional family will transmit that dysfunctionalness into the community. Okay. If a man is an, in trouble at home, he will bring it in the office. If a woman has trouble at home, she will bring it where she works. If children and, are from a dysfunctional family, that will manifest where they go. So family is key to the wellness of school, the wellness of community, the wellness even of our politics. Mm -hmm. Family is critical in everything that we do. Because anyway, at the end of the day, every one of us goes back to a family. Okay. Either you go back to that family to get reinforcement and strength, mm -hmm. or you go there and you are torn apart and destroyed. But family can never be ignored. It's like refusing to think about the bed you sleep on. Wow. It will affect you whatever you do. Wow. Yeah. Man, that is so powerful. Now, um, we have so many things going on in leadership. Yeah. We have uh, in every circle. Mm -hmm. And uh, thinking about what is going wrong, <coughs> uh -huh. we can talk, we can give ideas and all that. Mm -hmm. But I thought that if we go back to the family, we may not fix the problem now, mm -hmm. but we have a place to begin. Mm -hmm. What do you think went wrong? Well, let me add something. You, we may not fix things now, mm -hmm. but we may also fix them. Yes. <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. when you go to hospital, you take medicine so that you can get well. Yeah. Sometimes to prevent. Mm -hmm. So what we are going to do today may be preventative. Yeah. And some of, some of it may be curative. Mm -hmm. I think that um, we, we need to not be very discouraged. Yeah. I need to announce family functions. Mm. Family is good. There's a lot of good families. Mm. Uh, I believe I need to stay strong in marriage works. Marriage works. It yes. works. I mean, there are very many good marriages. There are very many good families. Mm. There are many excellent children mm -hmm. in our community. Yes. We have very many very good fathers and mothers. So, I, I, I want to put that straight because mm. sometimes we, we can focus on the negative, but we need to also consider yes. the positive is also there. Mm -hmm. The only problem is that uh, we cannot ignore you know, what is wrong also. Yes. What is right is good. I mean, why I tell people the marriage works is because I've been in one for many years. Yes. Almost 40 years. Yes. And you've been in one for a long time too. Yeah. And I've seen you with your wife and children. I know yours is a good marriage. Wow, thank and, you. And I can testify. Mine is great, too. Mm -hmm. um, and I have seen others, many. The church is full of good families. Yes. So, uh, but that does not mean the society does not have a problem. Mm. So, where did we go wrong? Where did we start having so many problems? Yeah. I, I, I would say that... Uh, Partially is because we have grown fast. We have grown fast, eh? Fast growth always means fast problems coming also. Mm -hmm. And uh, sometimes we are not prepared for things coming furiously. Mm. I remember one time when our church grew very fast. Mm -hmm. uh, and when we moved from 300 to 1,000 people in a short time, people were frustrated. Yeah. The one who cleaned the toilet wanted to close them. Because, because people are using it so Because much. he said people are using them badly. So <laughs> she wanted to protect them. Protect them. From being used. Yeah. <laughs> those, those who cleaned the hall, <laughs> they, they are frustrated. Yeah. Because the hall is getting too dirty. Okay. But the thing is, it was not that the hall was getting too dirty. It's that we did not prepare for that For growth. more people. For more people. Wow. So when we got more people, we got more messages. Mm -hmm. And because we got more messy, we focus on the mess. Mm -hmm. What we needed to do is uh, get ready for growth and, if, and deal with it. 
Now, as a nation, we have grown in a very fast rate. If you think uh, just about 10 years, every 10 years, our nation grows in millions. Every 10 years. Mm. So, so, so we, we have grown too fast. Uh, I remember when I first came to Nairobi, mm -hmm. there were no traffic jams. No. We, we used to ride even a bicycle through the city. Yeah. And it was comfortable, nobody feared anything. But, in, but today, you don't want to try some things that used to, yeah. to happen. Why? Not because anything is wrong with the bicycles and the cars. Is that we have grown. Mm. Uh, and probably we have not prepared for that growth. So it came. Okay. The same has happened to the nation. Mm. We have too many children in school. Too many at home. Mm -hmm. Too many jobless people. Mm -hmm. So all these things happened and are happening fast. Sometimes faster than the preparation. Okay. We have, uh, because of that, and the challenges also come the same way. Mm -hmm. So, so we have uh, bad methods of solving problems because we are not prepared for them. Mm -hmm. For example, when COVID came, I, I, and, and uh, there was, uh, there was uh, lockdowns, mm -hmm. I saw parents frustrated because children have been told to stay home. Mm -hmm. and, I, and I talked to some parents who said, we are paying for them to stay in school. What are we going to do with them at home? Mm -hmm. And I said, excuse me, but they are your children. They are not the teacher's children. Yeah. And I realized there are very many parents who are not prepared to parent. Mm -hmm. they, they transfer parenting to, 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 to teachers. Yes. So, that, so it, it becomes easy to pay school fees and send the children to the teacher. Wow. And expect the teacher to be the father, mm -hmm. to be the mother, to be the teacher, and sometimes to be the pastor, to be the counselor, to be everything. And that teacher has his own children. He has his own children. And he may also be having the same trouble you have. Okay. You know? So I, I think the, the thing is we grow faster, but at the same time, our people have not been prepared to handle family. Okay. The, st the other thing is breakdown in our social, social structures. Mm -hmm. well, initially, people stayed within the same area. Urbanization has really messed it all. I mean, we... When, when you are growing, you could go to your grandmother in the morning and, uh, you know, and your uncles and all that. And they were all involved in a child upbringing. If there is a job, they were all involved, whatever. Now, the breakdown of the social structure mm. has created another structure that is not supportive to the family. Mm -hmm. And uh, we need, therefore, to create another society that is supporting the family. Mm -hmm. And so, where, where, where now you are like in the city? And you're here. And the next, your other brother is in Meru, the other one is in Mabasa, then your father is in Nyeri and all that. Mm -hmm. So you do not have that support of family, mm -hmm. and then you get children. They don't have the connection with uncles and cousins and all that, mm -hmm. and all that was necessary. Yeah. Then also, these people are not a community. You have that fellow does not know the other one. I lived in a, in a neighborhood where I didn't know my next door neighbor. Mm. And, and mean, our doors were separated by about five feet. Yeah. Uh, it took me time to know that because I, I moved in and they, they move out and all that. Mm -hmm. Now, mm. our children could not get the benefit of our neighbor. Yeah. Even if they're in trouble. Because Although we are neighbors, we are not a community. We are individuals, minding our own business. Initially, the business of bringing up children was a community thing, yeah. was a society thing. Now, mm -hmm. it is not. Now, Bishop, you know, um, let's now go back to mm -hmm. where now we started. Yeah. And you said... The problem is here now in the structure, of course, mm -hmm. the, the, the growth. The growth is too fast. And uh, you have talked about family having been, or parenting having been social. Mm -hmm. Now we are raising children the way you know better, the way I know better. Mm -hmm. And then you are raising leaders who are not socializing. Uh -huh. And then they come out to lead. Okay. Now, how do we make sure that we identify leadership in our children and also impact leadership in them? 
I think we have to be we have to be intentional okay. as a community. We have to be very intentional about how we bring our children, mm. how we bring one another, mm -hmm. so that intentionally we support each other. Even the Bible says we should not neglect meeting together. Yes. So that we can inspire each other and support each other mm -hmm. so that we both can develop. Mm -hmm. the, the Apostle Paul in Philippians chapter 3, verse 17 mm -hmm. talks about... Uh, about himself mm -hmm. and he says brethren join me in following my example mm -hmm. and note those who so walk as you have us for a pattern okay now that's a leader who is intentional and conscious that his life is being observed wow that people who he is leading mm. are, are seeing how he is like. Mm. He is not saying, do what I say, mm -hmm. not what I do. Yes. He is saying, follow my example. And then, follow others who are like me, who, have, who, who are supposed to be your pattern mm. or, mo or model. Mm. And, and we struggle with this idea of models. People fear to be law models. Okay. But we really have to admit, a leader is going to be copied. Mm. A leader is going to impact people, and people will try to be like a leader. So we must be intentional. Intentional in murdering? Yeah, intentional in murdering, and intentional in our living, knowing that those who watch us are going to copy us. And beginning with our children. Well, Bishop, man, <laughs> so not that. <laughs> uh, Pastor Jeff, they say good morning to you. Uh -huh. uh, Pastor Zach Wangi was our guest last week, uh -huh. and he says, "Tuned in, amazing guest, great host, awesome discussion, leadership in the family." Yep. And then uh, I have um, Alex Mwangi is greeting you. Say good morning. Wow. Good and then, morning. Then uh, Bernard, uh, Levery Bernard in um, in uh, Ruai is saying, "Wow, deep truth about family. Such a blessing. The church is full of good families." Alex is saying, "Preparation for growth is key." Um, I'm j just reading a few that wow. um, are writing to you. Uh, let me just uh, quickly check on what they, they, they are saying um, in, um, in the YouTube because it's good that uh, we balance all this. Okay. Somebody was telling me, oh, you keep telling us to watch uh, in the YouTube and then you don't, <laughs> you don't <laughs> comment. I want to be faithful to, to comment, to okay. read a comment. Yes, um, Pastor Watata, thank you so much. He says, Salimia Skofu Sana. Family system has become weaker and weaker, and we need to know where we lost it. Mm -hmm. We are tuning. Wow. Thank you so much. Well, continue writing to us, continue talking to us. Hey, if you have a question you're going to ask, Bishop will be here and will be happy to answer. So if you want to write to us, remember our WhatsApp number is just there. Write to us, but please don't call through that number. So you talked about monitoring, Bishop. Yeah. And you talked about... Uh, you know, doing it, not just saying it. Not saying it. Mm -hmm. you, what, what, what you say, what you say can be forgotten. Yeah. What you do is going to be impacting. Okay. And people tend to do what you do, not what you say. All right. Now, and that's where I think that parents need to be sensitive about what they are doing because it will impact on their children. Mm. Now, I, I was like this for uh, all my life. I, I determined myself very early in my life, mm -hmm. that I would want to bring up a family. Okay. I, I determined I want to bring up a son, not a, not, a, not, a, not, a, not a male. Not a male, yes. I want to bring a daughter, mm. not, a, not a female. Mm -hmm. And so my, my interaction, even when I'm busy, I want to do things that I'm conscious, mm -hmm. that they can copy. Yes. But I, but I want that to be copied also by my members. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't want to tell them how to treat their wives. When I'm treating my wife funnily. Okay. I don't want to tell them how to treat their children when I'm treating my children funnily. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and, and for that reason, I, 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 I deliberately planned in my life to spend time with my family even when I'm very busy. Okay. Because I knew they are going to follow what I'm doing. Okay. And it is going to be important. So, s sometimes, let me tell you something funny. One time I was doing something for my wife. No, I was not conscious of what the children are doing. That's long ago. And uh, my children were small. And my son was watching what is going on. So he tiptoed to where we were. And finally I discovered he is checking on me. 
And then when I turned, he, he laughed. He said, when I grow up, I'd like to be a, father, a husband <laughs> like you. <laughs> you know, wow. I, I really liked that. That yeah. was, as a young fellow, about seven years. Um, and, 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 I, and I can tell you this, the children watch. A lot of things that we blame the children for doing, they have not learned them from school. Okay. They have learned them from home. So in other words, you are saying, if we are to talk about any failure, if we have to talk about anything that is not working, mm -hmm. family. I, I would say, exonerated. I, I want to say this. Mm -hmm. We must, first of all, take responsibility okay. as family. Mm -hmm. Not point p fingers, but accept responsibility. A and that is where, Bishop, I would really want us to work on, even uh -huh. after this. Yeah. Because I, we have in the issues of uh, marking the answers. Uh-huh. But we answer. did not check the process. Uh, yeah. So we wait at the end to say, then, let's see what you are getting. Mm -hmm. You know, there's a story that uh -huh. I, I, I was laughing about. Yeah. Um, just, a, you know, just a story mm -hmm. of this guy who is a psychiatrist who was testing some three sick men mm -hmm. whether they are getting healed. Okay. So he asked them a question. He asked one, what is three plus three? Okay. And he said 2,500. Oh. He said, well, this is still very sick. Then he asked the other one, what is three plus three? He said, uh, Wednesday. <laughs> he said, well, I think he is very sick. So he asked the other one. He said, uh, what is three plus three? He said, six. Mm -hmm. He said, wow, I think this is getting healed. Mm -hmm. So he asked him, how did you get the answer? He said, I took 2,500 and divided by Wednesday. And I got six. Ooh. Ooh. So he realized, although he got the answer, Maybe it was a guess. Yeah. So let us not stay at the edge <laughs> and mark the answer. We yeah. have to go back to the process. Oh, yeah. And I would want us to look at the process of the fa in the family mm -hmm. on how, what process we need to engage for us to get the right answers when mm -hmm. it comes to leadership. So Absolutely. what we do is uh, we are going to take a very short break, uh, just two minutes, and then after that we'll come back and continue. What you can do for me is please keep writing to someone. We have a break, not for you to go away, just for you to write back to us and ask a question if you could. Remember, when we come back, we'll continue from there and it will be a blessing. Stay there and we'll be back shortly. There is no town, there is no city, there is no nation without fathers. They went before us and set the stage of what we see in the gospel today. It's immediately when I got saved. Wow. The Lord blessed in my heart passion for souls. They fought the battles and prepared the way. They were told these miracle workers here from Kenya. Mm -hmm. He has troubled so many churches in Kenya. Troubled. Be mm -hmm. careful. Mm -hmm. Others said he's a false prophet, but the sick did not listen to that. They needed it. What did they do that we are not doing? We believed the word of God that it is true. I believe the word of God that by his stripes I was healed. Do not fear, for you will not be ashamed. The gospel then and the gospel now. God says do not be dismayed. We didn't have the technical gospel that people have today. If you believe, bow your head, raise your hand, come forward. No. Mm. No, no. Mm -hmm. People just stood up and began to repent by themselves. Wow. Others crying on the floor, mm -mm. saying, save me, save me, save me. Oh, Jesus. Dressing the mantles. Well, thank you so much. Thank you so much. I'm so happy you just waited for us. We just, it was just a short time. We are back again. Remember, my guest, Dr. Sami Gitari, the Bishop of Gospel Celebration Churches, and he is here sharing with us on matters, leadership, and family. Just before we went on break, Bishop, you are talking about um, 
the modeling and the process mm -hmm. and uh, we agree that when we come back we need to talk about the process the what process. systems do we need to put in place so that we can help family i mean so that in the family so that we can help our children and so that we can raise leaders who can be a blessing to a nation okay the the first thing that uh, we must uh, do mm -hmm. is accept that the teacher is not going to do parenting for you that is true that's number one. Mm. Because as long as you are th thinking that is the work of the, pa of the teacher, you can't do it. Please, parent who is listening to us, hear what the doctor is saying. He's saying that if you are a parent, don't delegate that work of parenting to a teacher. Remember, this is your child. This is not a teacher's kid. It is your child. Take care. That is your responsibility. And there's a difference between teaching and parenting. Mm-hmm. The teacher is concerned about giving knowledge. Mm -hmm. The parent is concerned about bringing up a life. Okay. It's concerned about food, habits, mannerisms, world view, uh, living, pleasant future. Mm -hmm. Th that's parenting. Parenting is more intense than teaching. Okay. Now, so, so, so that's the first thing. This would also not, parents should also not transfer leadership or, or parenting to pastors. Okay. Because some, pa some parents leave it to, par to pastors. Yeah. So they bring the children and, and to they church. And blame, they blame pastors. They say, I, you know, like, let me tell you, mm -hmm. one time, um, you know, in, in our church, let me say this, mm -hmm. a small boy was caught pick, you know, picking something mm -hmm. from someone's back. Yeah. And the CCTV caught on him. So I called the father mm -hmm. and the mother who are not members of our church. Mm -hmm. And you know what they told me? When we brought the child to you, was a good child. Oh. <laughs> and you can imagine this boy is with us every Sunday. Every, only Sunday. Every, only Sunday. Yeah. And just for like one hour. Mm -hmm. And he is blaming us that the boy was good until he was brought to us. Yeah. So, so you, I agree. That, that's you. very important. We mm -hmm. cannot delegate parenting to anybody mm -hmm. or anything it mm -hmm. is the work of our father it is the work of a mother yes and um, mothering is a job full time okay and the fathering is also a job full time all right and it involves very small things it's being with the children wow just being with them mm -hmm. Take them to the kitchen. Mm -hmm. Show them to clean utensils. Mm -hmm. Take the boys mm -hmm. out to do what men do. Mm -hmm. When you are eating with them, show them how to eat. Show them how to respect other people's things. Yes. Show them how not to steal. Show them how to work with their hands. Show them how to say sorry when they are wrong. Admit they are wrong if they are wrong. Show them how to respect adults. Show, show them how to be responsible. Mm. This is fathering. Yeah. And it is going to graduate at different levels. Mm. I, I still work with my children and the adults. But you know, when, when, when they were small, I talked to small things. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I spanked them. Yeah. Sometimes I, I mean, when they grow to a certain level, you can't spank them. Mm -hmm. We negotiated. Yes. We argued. Mm -hmm. But we, we, the idea is to build the character and the strength and perspective in this young person. And as they grow, you trust them for higher levels. Mm. Because leadership also is about being responsible. Wow. So the, the children need to learn leadership even in the home. And leadership is taking responsibility and doing what you need to do. Mm. If you can't lead yourself, you can't lead another person. Yeah. So, so they need to begin by learning to lead themselves. Mm. Know how to manage their bed, how to manage their books, mm -hmm. know how to manage their things, yes. know how to manage their emotions. Mm -hmm. Once they learn to do those things, and, and when you are, do, you are working with them, don't become harsh. Because one of the things parents do is punish children unnecessarily. Okay. So instead of children learning, they get pain. And they rebel against the thing you are trying to teach them. Okay. For example, I would say this. Mm -hmm. If a child takes this glass mm -hmm. and it breaks it. Mm. Many parents would get the pain of buying the glass <laughs> and punish that child for the pain of breaking the, the glass. glass. 
what you are communicating is the grace is the grass is very important than the one who broke than it. the one who broke it you cannot punish a child for making a mistake after all you also make mistakes and you're not punished for making mistakes you punish for disobedience okay if you are decided don't take that grass and that person took the grass and broke it then that person deserves punishment mm -hmm. because it's breaking directions and orders mm. it's going beyond boundaries wow but we punish and the children become frustrated with the parents now parents come home tired because making mistake is part of growth everybody makes mistakes yeah even me so you don't punish wow that's powerful you don't punish for mistakes mm -hmm. you punish for disobedience wow and uh, and also mm -hmm. you must never ever punish children because you are hurt okay because if you get hurt and you punish children whose problem are we solving you are solving your own problem we are solving your problem you are the one who is having steam so you are releasing it wow but uh, so it doesn't matter how big a mistake the child will do mm -hmm. if that child did a mistake mm -hmm. even if you felt very bad please don't punish that child because you have pain handle your pain first then when you are not having pain you can talk about what they did because you have separated the issues now bishop are you because i'm, I'm trying to follow you on this ah. we have people who carry pain mm -hmm. from their family yeah and they grew with it with it and so when we give them position of leadership oh you they now start releasing it releasing it or either they are releasing it or they also try to do what they saw being done wow if they if they never saw people allowed to make mistakes mm. nobody will ever miss, make mistakes and if they make mistakes they will never own up they will blame someone or do everything else necessary to cover it wow bishop <laughs> this is making like making me feel like uh, we should have a course to train parents <laughs> or now to train leaders <laughs> from their childhood <laughs> but before we get to that um i have a um, bishop uh leverend warui is asking most of the time there's a challenge of with raising children or having families with no values what is the best way to develop a family value system? Bishop tell us. He is asking that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I like that. Mm -hmm. I like that. It, it's, it's not very hard. Mm -hmm. It's number one, believe the Bible. I mean, everything is in the scriptures. Mm -hmm. Believe the scriptures. All right. And the next thing is, make a clear mind. What kind of a family do you want to see? Mm -hmm. I'll give you, for example, make very basic things. Like in our family, we don't steal yes we don't lie yes we don't uh, we don't write where we are not supposed to write mm. we don't uh, take other people's things without permission mm -hmm. in this family we pray you know make make a picture of the family you want yes and then when you have it that's yours mm -hmm. now share it with your family so that it is a shared value okay now once that is shared pursue it over a long time because it will not happen tomorrow okay for example uh when my children were growing up mm -hmm. uh, i want to see a child come home with a pencil that is not from our home okay then we have to say where did you get that pencil from now they will say i didn't steal it i got it from john john is my friend we say okay don't be bringing john's pencil get yours where is yours oh mine was stolen okay <laughs> <laughs> okay so so if your pencil is stolen don't also steal mm. we solve the problem of somebody stealing number one care for yours yeah but number two we will replace it mm. so if they know they can talk to us and we will solve the problem they will develop the habit we want you know bishop you, uh -huh. you it looks like a small thing yeah and i think that small thing is where I mean, that place is where things go wrong. The me. big thief started being a small thief. Because eh, how you deceive your son with another pencil, uh -huh. your daughter, mm -hmm. and you don't care. 
Yeah. But again, for you to see the pencil, it means that you, you are, are there. You have to be there. Oh, yeah, you are so there. So presence is very key. Presence in is raising critical. Our children. You cannot raise children by remote control. Wow. You, you, have, mm. you, you, you have to have presence. Mm. You, can, you can't be pu pushing buttons from, <laughs> from a distance. <laughs> Reverend Warue, I'm sure you are getting the wisdom. Bishop is the reason that you must read the Bible. And then whatever rules you set, you must keep at them. Don't keep breaking them. And then, mm -hmm. and, and then and for be consistent. Yeah, them. that's it. Yes. And it's a great successes when they succeed. Oh, man. Bishop eh? Wekele. That is very powerful. <laughs> you know, you remind me uh -huh. one time, yeah. um, you were talking about celebrating something. And I remember telling you, nothing much here to celebrate. Mm -hmm. You said, listen, we don't celebrate our birthday because we achieved a lot. No. We celebrate because one year and is One year gone. is over. Now, small successes. Yeah. So even when your child does... Um, a small thing. A small thing. Let me tell you an example. My, my son was scored very badly. Mm. Very badly. And... Uh, he felt bad because his sister scored well. Mm. And uh, so, so, so he, had, he comes home very dis dejected because we have celebrated the success. Mm -hmm. So he said, well, finally, I know you don't like me because mm -hmm. I didn't do well. Wow. So we, you are not a son because you have good grades. Mm. The good grades are things you get. Yes. And we talk about grades that he got to relax and says, well, after all, numbers are numbers. Yes. Which is the truth. Because a son is not a son because he did well. Mm. A daughter is not a daughter because he's number 10 or number 1. The, the, those children are accepted as they are. Mm. And they are, not, they are not your children in comparison with my children. No. <laughs> they are children because they are born in that family. Wow. So they need to be reinforced that way. Mm -hmm. But after that, the next time he did very well, he, he improved by three or four points. Wow. Just three. No, not a very big. <laughs> oh, now we made a party. You know, <laughs> so you, you celebrate mm. success. You know, I, I love what uh, you are sharing, Bishop. Um, it, it reminds me that um, everybody has something that they can celebrate everybody. about their children. And uh, just before we even go very far, I want to read a few things, uh, uh, a few comments here. <laughs> Uh, Abby, I can see you. Abby says, good work. Thank you, Abby. Uh, Pastor Grace says, Andrew, you are paying fast. That is so profound. Mm -hmm. As a parent, don't, don't just punish for the sake of it, you know. And then the other thing is, watch your children. Uh, I'm happy that you're doing very well. Keep on writing to us. If there's a question, keep asking. Thank you, Reverend Waroi, for that question. I'm sure it has been answered. Write to us and tell us whether the, the, you have gotten it, we, we, the, the answer is there. And uh, Bishop, um, I, I'm looking at uh, now these children were in the home. They have been raised well. Um, but also we need to identify leadership in them. Yes. How do we identify leadership? in our children. I think it's the, the leadership is the easiest thing to identify in any, not even in children, mm. even in adults. Mm -hmm. if, uh, if, you, if you want to identify leadership, mm -hmm. get children out where the others are. Mm. You will see who is saying, let's go this way. Let's sing this song. When things go wrong, you say, the one who will say, now let's talk. Okay. That's a peacemaker. Mm -hmm. You see the one who is saying, Ah, this song is not good. Let's sing this one. You know who is able to make decisions. Oh, I thought the opposite of peacemaker would be troublemaker. No, no, no. I, I love no, the way you're putting I don't want to go for troublemaker because <laughs> yeah, you know what? looking for leadership. Let me tell you something. Mm. You know, darkness is not something you should look for. Yeah. Darkness is the absence of right. <laughs> darkness, ah. you, can't define dark, you can't define darkness. You just need to switch over light. Yeah, darkness is the absence of light. <laughs> what do you see when there's no light? Yeah, so, is darkness. <laughs> <laughs> so instead of looking for the negative, yes. look for the right. Mm -hmm. Once you get the right mm -hmm. and the right is correct, darkness yes. will be taken care of. Wow. So give them something to do. Mm. And once they have something to do, you will see leadership developing. Okay. And, uh, that is responsibility. That's a responsibility. You start releasing responsibility yeah. to the children. You start releasing it. And uh, I can tell you, mm -hmm. it will grow. And, uh, and, and, and then you celebrate their mm -hmm. leadership also mm -hmm. by giving them more jobs, mm -hmm. affirming it, 
saying that is great. Mm -hmm. Do you remember when I let you do this? You know? Yeah. You, you, you celebrate that. Yes. So sometimes I like uh, seeing the children, in, even in our church, mm -hmm. uh, and, I, and I want to see them playing. Yes. And I see the one who organized the, the small stones mm -hmm. that the others were, you know, praying with. Mm. And, and, and I hug that kind and say, oh, you are great. How did you do this? I'm telling you that kind comes to church the following day with hands up like this. Waiting oh, for that. Waiting to move on. Yeah. And learn to read. Because we all grow by the things we are farmed. There is somebody who told you you can read. Then you. Then you can read. There is somebody who told you you can write. Then you wrote. Then you wrote. There is somebody who told you you, you speak well. Then you started speaking. Then you started speaking. You can sing. Yeah. You know? They, they, they say, so affirmation lead is the way to go. Affirmation is powerful. Even, the even a troublesome child, if you locate the good things that child does and affirm them, that person will become good. Wow. Let's, let me uh, have a man called uh, Wangond who says, my two favorite men of God. <laughs> he's, he, I think he's celebrating you. He's affirming you. He uh, says, may God bless and keep you. Then uh, Pamela, thank you, says, God bless you. Monica Wawero says, Puff teaching. And uh, then Wangondu says, Wow, um, ever parent, um, wow, parent, whether single or married, need to hear and understand this. This will solve uh, the current problem, situation in our schools, you know? Mm -hmm. Keep going, Bishop. Then uh, Bernard, Levin Bernard says, Deep, very deep. We need this wisdom in the church today. Simple, practical. Yes, profound. Yet profound. Wow. Um, the George Wafura says, joined in and watching from Dika. Uh, Wangondu says, yes, we don't look for darkness. I love that. And then uh, Marian says, it's a blessing having this man of God on board. I hope leaders are watching. And then Geteru Perez says, marking the answers and not looking at the process. <laughs> man, that's wonderful. <laughs> Let's move on, Bishop. And uh, uh, so... We are talking about giving responsibilities mm -hmm. to see leaders. To see leaders. But uh, again, do you realize, Bishop, we have a generation that feels like responsibility is punishment. When you tell children mm -hmm. clean or wash, you know, they feel like you are punishing them. Yes. Uh, it's because we begin at the wrong time. Mm -hmm. If they were never given responsibility early, and then you begin at the top, that's tough. But there is a way of doing things until things look nice. I think it's you I had to say this. Mm. That if you get something that is bitter. Yeah, if you eat uh, pepper smiling. Pepper. And you eat it smiling. Mm. People will ask for a bit of it. Mm. They will know it is painful when, they when it's in their mouth. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And, 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 and if, you, if you have a responsibility that you also avoid, mm -hmm. and then you give it to children, mm -hmm. they, will also, they will treat it in a negative way. I remember when we were young, when you were younger, and I was younger too. We were both younger. Okay. You need to know why I said I have known this man for over 40 years. He is my big brother. Born, same father, same mother, and we thank God, serving God together. Yes. Yeah, when we were younger, there, there, there is a time nobody wanted to clean the church. Mm. You remember? Yes. Then, then, then you are the one who proposed. Mm. If we clean the church, we will die. Mm -hmm. Now, obviously, everyone knows we can't die. We can't, yes. So, when we started cleaning the mm. two of us yes. every Saturday, yes. then other people got interested in it. Yes. In it fact, became sweet. It became, it became so sweet. I was banished from cleaning. Yes, I you remember know, that. I was told never come to clean again. Yes. <laughs> and I've never done it again. Mm. But, but you see, as long as it's something that you don't, you treat it negatively, mm -hmm. people also treat it negatively. Mm -hmm. I have a, a young man who went to a Bible school. And he was given, they were, when they were sharing responsibilities, he was given the job of cleaning the bathroom. He refused. He said that is being unfair to him because of his color. Well, nobody followed. But the president of the school, not the principal. The president. The president, who lived aloud. He, he started cleaning it. So one day this young man went to the bathroom and he found the president cleaning. He was so embarrassed. He said, ah, you mean you're the one who's cleaning? And uh, he said, listen, sir, I will not only clean this term. For all the life I live in this school, I'll be the cleaner. 
And the president told him, listen, the problem is not that people are unfair to you. The problem is that you are proud. And if wow. you break your pride, mm. there is no job that is difficult. Mm. He told me, from that day he cleaned not that term which, which was given. Mm. He cleaned the next several terms. Wow. Because his attitude changed when he saw the president himself doing the job. Because he me saw this yeah. is a punishment. Yeah. This is being unfair. Yeah. This is a racism. It's racism, all those. And you see, that is why the Apostle Paul said, follow our example and others who are like us who provide a pattern for you. Praise the Lord. So when we throw things to children, you mm. do that, you do that, you do that, but there are things you also don't want to do. Mm. They will not enjoy them. I'll tell you, for example, in my house, I clean utensils. Mm. Sometimes they will be dirty, and I'll walk in there and clean the sufuriyas, clean the plates. You yep. now? Oh, yeah. Or clean. are you saying what you do? Or what example? I do. Okay. What I do now. Right. <laughs> clean. Yes. Now, when I clean, it becomes easy for me any time to say, clean those things. Because they know it's not that I hate it. It's not a job I can't do. Well, you parent who is listening to us, please know that giving your children responsibility is not a punishment. And you should actually give your children responsibility not because they have done something wrong. Give them responsibility even when you are appreciating them. Some people only give children work to do when they do something wrong. And so they attach pain and uh, punishment to the responsibilities we give them. And Bishop is here, man, a good parent sharing with us. He is not just saying what he thinks should be done. He is sharing with us what he does. And that is what makes the difference. Let's <laughs> move on, Bishop. You know, I used to be a teacher, you know that. Yes. It's the time I used to teach in high school. I used to teach mathematics and chemistry. Mm -hmm. And I enjoy teaching. And I enjoy children. I, and, and I also used to run a, 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 an academy. Mm. And uh, one of the things I found is uh, a problem, both with the parents and with the teachers, is that sometimes parents are so disconnected with their children and they have too much expectation on the teachers. Mm. And then when the teacher sees something wrong with the children, the parents protect, defend the children. Okay. So you have defended this child and made the child to think the teacher is wrong, then you go home and expect the teacher to do well. Oh, yeah. If you undermine the teacher's authority and then you expect him to be able to be a blessing to your son, you are that wrong. Work. It doesn't work. Now, it is possible for the Mwarimu to be wrong. Okay? Yeah. What I have concluded is if the Mwarimu is wrong, still any force the rule. Mm. Then later, find an opportunity to talk to the teacher. Is the teacher? Honestly, you are wrong. Wow. But I, I needed to affirm you. I needed to support mm. you. Mm. Because that's the same thing we should do with our wives and our, and, our, and our husbands. Yes. If my wife is doing something really wrong on the children, and the children are good, they know. They will jump back to me. Um, I will affirm the mother and say, listen to what your mother says. And uh, then mm. I'll get the mother later and say, Mother, mm. what you are doing mm -hmm. was not right. Wow. But uh, you needed to make this correction. Wow. But you cannot do that mm. before the children. Yes. Because they were not, the, that person you corrected in their presence would well, have no authority. As long as the authority. Cannot yeah. talk to them again. You know. And, we, and I think, <laughs> Bishop, uh -huh. that is something that uh, needs to be, you know, directed, especially to parents today. Mm -hmm. Because... In high school, I'm sure when you are there, you must have engaged this time where uh, a case like a child has done something wrong. Oh, yeah. Then the parent come, as you have said, and um, it's for the child. Oh, yeah. And doesn't want to hear anything. Oh, one, one and then time. after that, he uh -huh. gives you a real lecture. Yeah. And tell you now and leaves you with a child. Yeah. Oh. Because, because he's, he's, he's being entitled. I am paying for your service. Okay. He is not thinking, he is messing for himself. All right. You know, one time we had a case of a kid who had a problem and we couldn't punish him because he had excuses that were not reasonable. Mm. So he was sent home to come with his parents. He came with his father. 
And the father said, this fellow cannot do that kind of a punishment. I know him. I know him. He can't. So the, the, the principal said, okay, if he can't do that, then we change the punishment. Mm. He says, no, even that he can't do. So, so there was nothing we could do to this child because the father did not believe in this fellow being punished, whatever. So anyway, he was asked to go home with his kid. And uh, needless to say, he did very poorly. The, the, the young man did very poorly. Mm. The following year, he came to the school to repeat. To ask for permission to repeat. Yeah, to repeat, form four. And uh, we said, okay, we can't repeat in our school because here we have rules. We have regulations. And the father said, no, he can't do anything. We said, but he is not, we can't punish him. We can't tell him what to do. And he said, he can do anything. Now he can. Now he can. <laughs> and the young man also said, whatever you want. Yes. But, uh, it, but he wasted a year. Mm -hmm. the, the point I'm making is this. Mm -hmm. the, the parents must accept yes. that the, the, the rules of engagement in life, mm. you do not undermine a reader and expect him to read. Let me read a few I salute you, men of God. I have a daughter who is very nagging until it feels like um, you want to get away from her. She does not appreciate anything. She is very argumentative. She is... Please help. Uh-huh. And we have one minute to help. Oh, I like <laughs> that. I like that. <laughs> she is very argumentative. argumentative. Let's pause on that. Uh, Rosalind Zendia says children are children not because of their failures or successes, but because they are born in that family. Absolutely. Great, I am learning. My co-host, my friend, uh, Leverend Shitakwa says, wonderful discussion. So Bishop, just um, uh, I'm directing that uh, we have one minute. Okay. Just respond to that person. I think an argumentative kind is a good one. Mm -hmm. What you need is to let that kind argue. Yeah. And then also be willing to argue without being annoyed. Okay. Then bring up the issues. Mm -hmm. And uh, the problem with the parents is we think being questioned is being disrespected. Mm -hmm. And we also think children who ask why are frustrating to us. Mm -hmm. I think parents should be willing mm -hmm. to listen, mm -hmm. to argue, and to lose an argument sometime. Okay. You know, then... If that person argues very well, mm. listen, but make the decision. <laughs> I, I guess you are, that kid is like you, Apostle. Yeah, I was. Uh, you you know, know me. You used to argue so much yes. with the dad. Yes. <laughs> you know? I, I, and my father loved me for that. Yeah. Because uh, we would argue and argue until we came to a, we came An to a agreement. Consensus. And I remember even to his death, <laughs> we were still buddies. Oh, yeah. Because really, I could not become who I am yeah. if I never argued. Yeah, because you, you will be doing things without understanding. And you know, he died very disappointed that I never became a lawyer. He oh, yeah. That yeah, he thought you were a lawyer for all the years. I think I should do that to, <laughs> to make him rest more in peace. Maybe. You know, Bishop, this has been so powerful. Yeah. And uh, you can't imagine our one hour is gone. It's on? Oh, my. My director says our time is up. Oh, my. But uh, I cannot uh, end without mentioning what you have done. Okay. Bishop Gitali has written very powerful books. One here is called Amazing Freedom, uh, Freed to Be Free. This is a very powerful book. I have read it. And uh, he just talks about how you can enjoy your freedom. And uh, believe you me, this is a very powerful book. You'll be telling us where we can get a copy. And uh, of course, um, then the other book Bishop has done, man, this is book. I saw it win somewhere this oh, yeah. week. And it was a book of a year somewhere. And then it says, Keys to a Great Marriage, Making Your Marriage a Well of Happiness. This book is very powerful. I've read it again. And I want to recommend anyone who has listened to us to own a copy of this book. It will bless you. And even if we get another chance, we'll have him share more. But even if we don't get, get another chance, make sure that you get this book. Of course, when you get it and read it, <laughs> you can thank <laughs> me later. Where do we get this book, Bishop? First place is Keswick Bookshop okay. in the city of Nairobi. All right. The other place is Gospel Celebration Church, Gedurai Okayole. Okay. Yes. And uh, the other one is Lighting to Apostle Moridi or Light to Bishop Getari. And you will get a copy of it. And you'll get a copy. All those places, be sure you get his books and it will be a blessing. I want to say thank you so much. After this, 
as uh, we say in Kenya, Nyuma Yahema. I'll be talking to Bishop to see whether you'll be gracious to give us another time to tell us more. Preview me, this was not, I mean, we could not do much. We, we only scratch. But if God gives, another, uh, give, gives us another time, we are going to have a time and a continue from there. From our side, I want to say thank you so much, you participated through writing, sharing, and every way. I've been your host, Apostle Patrick Moredi. Remember, I minister at the Gospel Celebration Church, Kayole. And I also want to welcome you to our Sunday services. Come and enjoy more of what we do. And also, I want to say every Tuesday we are here, keep watching and keep telling people, Elevate TV is a great station to watch. God bless you. Shalom. Shalom.